Hi everybody, my name is Dennis, and welcome back to another EP review. Today we are reviewing the latest EP from Cosmo Pike, entitled A Piper for Janet. Now Cosmo Pike is a very talented artist, and going into this I kind of already had an idea that it was going to be something pretty good. I really enjoyed the single leading up to it, the self-titled track of Piper for Janet, and I was really looking forward to see what other directions this EP went into. And it ends up being really, really great without any real significant weak points. The opening track, Piper for Janet, is a phenomenal cut. The ja It's easily the jazziest thing across this entire EP, which does have a lot of jazz influences surrounding it. But it's very, very beautiful. It's very gorgeous. There is kind of a lushness to it all. The way the kind of guitar chords mix with these gorgeous pianos, these really jazzy horn sections that run through the entire track, as well as probably my favorite vocal performance across the entire record. It all works so, so well. It's tight, it's fun, it's catchy. Everything about this track just really works together, and Cosmo Pike's vocals are just phenomenal. And the somewhat odd, abstract, and almost lacking rhythm vocal performances add a lot to the track. It's almost in the sense of freeform jazz, where there's not necessarily a consistent rhythm or consistent melody, but it just kind of goes with the flow, and it goes wherever it ends up without any... You know, real careful consideration, but that's a lot of the appeal to it. You know, his vocals aren't to the same rhythm. They don't necessarily go at the same pace. There's a lot of space between certain words at some points, and other times he crams a lot of words in a really small frame of time. And it all just depends on the feeling of that moment of the song. It works really well in a kind of interesting take where it kind of reverses the roles of how that jazziness would be, where instead of, you know, a consistent vocal mixed with some avant-garde style, you know, all over the place, almost math music-esque instrumentation, it has a consistent rhythm and melody through the instrumentation, and again, very avant-garde, all over the place vocals. And it works really well, and he does this across the entire record to really great effect. I was really, I really love the style he goes for here. It's very unique, it's very noticeable, and it's really gripping. And his vocals are very dynamic, not just in pacing, but also in tone, where he can hit these gorgeous high notes, these lower low notes, and it works very well. And he's a pretty competent songwriter as well. Across uh, a Piper for Janet, as the EP. There's many themes of unrequited love and desire and acceptance of all of these emotions going on. And it's a pretty compelling story and a pretty interesting uh, character portrayal, I think. Or the opening track again, the Piper for Janet, ends up being a great um, lead up into these all of these ideas where we see him lying on his bed alone, kind of just reflecting on this failed relationship that he still wants back and he's reflecting on the good times of it how things went and it just ends up being a really really compelling track not just instrumentally not just vocally but lyrically as well filet mignon the next track is a really solid cut i guess if i had to pick a least favorite i would go with this one just because i think the verses in the first leg of the track could be a bit more interesting i think the the drum has an okay melody, but it didn't really engage me as much as other parts of this track and the other tracks on the EP. It's it's fine. There's nothing really wrong with it in the first few legs. It's still relatively catchy. I just wish there was more going on. Maybe it was a bit more fully fleshed out, maybe a bit more lush, maybe, you know, where there's just a bit more to it. But I do think that the chorus is really catchy. Again, I like it. I like it lyrically. Builds off the themes of the previous song quite well, and the closing segments of this song are just beautiful. Those guitar melodies hit hard. The way his vocals match them is really engaging. It's a really, really fun moment, and probably one of the catchiest moments across this entire EP. So not a bad track whatsoever. Railroad Tracks is another great cut on here. Uh, it's probably my favorite lyrically speaking alone, where 
we have this development of his character to where now he's seeing himself as almost having an opportunity to continue to pursue this woman, to continue to go after her, to continue to try and be with her, but it being self-aware enough to realize that it's not a good idea, where every time he sees her, he just kind of fades into the background. He, you know, wants to be with her, but he knows that he can't, and he is accepting it. And this kind of difficulty that goes on, this inner conflict that he has, is a really, really interesting one, and I just love how self-aware this whole cut is, where, you know, he's kind of seeing her on these metaphorical railroad tracks, where, you know, you could easily follow the railroad tracks, you can easily follow the direction they're going in, you can very, very simplistically just go where they are, just as he can very easily go after her, yet he chooses not to, he chooses to stay where he is. You know, he sees her on the railroad tracks, and it kind of makes him miserable, but he chooses not to go along with it. And I really love this line towards the end of the cut, or end of the song here, where he says, uh, you know, so in love, it sucks. And that's a really great way, I think, to sum up the lyrical themes of this entire EP, where you're so in love, it sucks. And I really love the juxtaposition of that line there. It's a really, really beautiful line that just, again, sums up the themes of this record perfectly. And instrumentally, Railroad Tracks is also really, really amazing. Vocally, it's phenomenal. I mean, the it's, again, a very lush, very jazzy uh, kind of progression along here. I think the much more stripped-back, uh, minimalistic outro to the song is very nice. Uh, again, where we have these much more soft, low, down-to-earth kind of vocal performances, it works really well with the much softer instrumentation, and the punchy pre-chorus, along with the way he sings, you know, you're a working businesswoman, just that vocal melody there is just mind-blowingly gorgeous. I really, really love it. And it just, it just really works. It's a really, really great track. You know, and again, I just cannot get over how well it really just sums up the lyrical themes of this record. Seasick is a the closer to the EP, and it's another really great cut. It's a fun one. It's really catchy. I think the uh, guitars and the clicky percussions and the keyboards all work really, really well here. It's another jazzier cut, um, more in line with the opener. Not quite as jazzy, but still got those influences going on. It works. It's really fun where he's expressing these ideas of where this love, or unrequited love, I should say, is just making him feel so sick to his stomach he's comparing it to being seasick. You know? And it almost... I, I, If I'm interpreting this right, I believe it's him writing a letter to her, kind of just expressing how he feels and almost like a final goodbye. Or, you know, he's gone through the entire process, and this is his last goodbye. But he still loves her, and he still cares about her, and it still makes him feel sick inside not being with her. It's a very sad story, but it's a very engaging one as well. Instrumentally, this EP was on point throughout. It's consistently catchy. It's creative. There's a nice blend of different genres and instrumentations on here, from some more standard pop stuff, to some jazzy stuff, to, you know, some very unique choices in percussion. It works really, really well. The vocal performances are dynamic in pacing and tone. It's a really, really gorgeous, gorgeous EP. From the very soft moments of A Piper for Janet, to the very punchy and lively moments of seasick. It's a great, great EP all around, and it's a tight 20 minutes. It's not that long of a listen, but it feels really satisfying the whole way through. I'm feeling a decent 8 on this one. It's definitely worth checking out. Great EP, consistently strong track list, and it's just really, really fun. If you gave this a listen, be sure to tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. Tell me how wrong my opinion is, as always, and I'll see you in the next review.